I realized that you have to teach. You can't sell if you want to be great at sales in this industry, mm. because there is so much they need to learn about what you sell and why you sell it and what to do with it once they buy it, that sales pitches just don't really work that good. Because even if they do, I have seen some guys sell with fear and you suck and it's time and you're not relevant. You're going to change. You got to keep up. And it, at the end of the day, it doesn't really work long term. Yeah. I had never written. I still can't believe I have four books. I, I heard Gary Vee say one time, I'll steal his joke. I've, r- I've written more books than I've read. I'm not really? an intellectual. You strike me as someone who reads a ton of books. I read a ton of stuff. I don't read a ton of books. Okay. Yeah, I read a ton of stuff. I don't read a ton of books. How do you consume a book? Me personally? Yeah. Now it's all audio. You, so you do audio because yeah. you, you reference a lot of books. I reference a lot of books and I list, I, the books I reference, I love. So I, I, I heard somebody teach this one time. Just pick five or six really great books and read them every year. Yeah. Instead of always trying to find a new one. So there's just a handful of books that I love. Uh, Hatching Twitter is one of my favorite books. The Method Method, one of my favorite books. I just gave you a book. Yeah. You know, 40 years worth of letters from the Berkshire Hathaway. Go get the book. Go get yeah. it. Because we got to... Oh, there it's right there. Here's mm-hmm. the book for... If you're on YouTube right now, you're going to be able to see this. This yeah. is unbelievable. This, yeah, this is a bam right, right, right here. Uh, where do I put that right there? Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Can I put that right yeah, there? It's in focus. Show them the back. This is, uh, yeah, the back is even... Even better. Berkshire Hathaway Letters to Shareholders, 1965 to 2014. The color pops. This will go in my new studio. This mm-hmm. is like... I like it. This is very yeah, cool. Yeah, no problem, man. I'll tell you a story I've never told anybody. And, and Brad would be fine with me telling this. He and I are very close, uh, even though we butt heads. Long story short, I had to go down to Brad's office to quit. Mm-hmm. And I was scared as <laughs> dude. I was in Brooklyn, shaking in my boots. I go in and... The Vuk office was pretty good size, but his little office was very small. It was like this. Okay. And it was a very small room. And I had I was very, very thoughtful about what I was going to say. I actually, like, wrote it. I actually took, like, several hours to come up with what I, how I wanted to say it because I cared about him that much. And I knew I was quitting at a time when he needed me. Mm-hmm. That was hard to do. And at the same time, I think it was also helpful for me to quit. So anyway, it was a tough conversation. Probably the most intense conversation I've ever had in my life with another person one-on-one where I, where I was, I wasn't scared because it it wasn't like that, but it was like, Oh, there there's a level of ruthlessness that exists that I didn't know existed. Because, you know, you kind of just, everything's fun, right? Everything came, everything's good. You're making speeches. But when you run a real business and your business is going through challenges and you're losing money, it gets real, dude. Yeah, it does. You know? And so I don't know all the economics and the financials of everything that happened. I don't. But I know that when I quit, I have never seen someone more upset in my life than how upset he was with me. And that was with me virtually perfectly explaining my goals. And, and he said something I never forgot in that interview. And it was, it was a dig. It was a dig, but it was one of those, like, I'm glad he said it Mm -hmm. in hindsight because I was there basically saying like, Hey, I've got all these cool ideas. And like, why can't we still work on the new stuff? Like I, I wasn't trying to like, I love them. I'm like, I want to work at Inman and do the new stuff. You know, I was trying to make it happen. Yeah, yeah. It was tricky. You like to do a lot of things. I do. I'm an entrepreneur. But the thing is, when you're a media company like Inman, you can't be investing in the companies that are on stage. Like, right. it's, like there's a line in the sand. And I was so drawn to, you know, Dot Loop and some of these other folks that I've worked for. So he looked at me and he said, I can't wait to see what happens if you ever stick to something. That's what he said. And it, it was like, man, he's right. Because quick and loans, 18 months, top producer, three years, Inman news, 18 months. Okay. He was right. And, and him saying that made me realize that I was making the right decision to become an entrepreneur and to go out on my own. Mm. I knew it right then. And I stuck with something. I stuck with curator and I won't say how much curator's worth, but he'd be proud of me. 
And so that I think is a lesson we can learn through an incredibly difficult conversation with, with emotion, with, with sort of pheromones and shaking. And like, it wasn't like a fight, but it was intense. Yeah. This is a real people going through a real and hard thing, dude. And so I'll never forget that moment. And I love Brad for that. I'm glad he did that. And I know he's okay with me talking about this because this is the real stories of the industry that people don't talk about. And I think that's something that hopefully moving forward, some of these back channel lobby con, you know, can yeah. start to maybe come to the light. And, and, and the reason is because it's the truth about how things work. It isn't because people thought someone was some way and they're a different way. No, no, no. If you want to run a real business, if you want to run a big business, if you want to run a fast growing business, if you want the influence Brad Inman has where Zillow's kissing his ass to be clear, when you're in that position, it is not as easy as people think. And they think they, they lean towards the writing and the personal brand stuff. That's the fun stuff, dude. P&Ls suck. Nobody likes doing those.